you are still watching ways now migrants contribute their knowledge networks and skills to build stronger and more resilient communities during the past month migrants have been at the forefront of the fight against covid 19. their work in the health transportation and food services made our lives on the lockdown more bearable now the 2020 theme for the international migrants day is reimagining human um Mobility. Now, people on the move hope for a brighter future. It is our collective responsibility to create a safer, more resilient world. And um, also, migration should be a choice, not, not a necessity. On Migrants Day, let's reaffirm our commitment to safe and dignified migration for all. Uh, this one is there to our hearts in Very Nigeria. Dead uh, I think Very dead I, I, want to, I choose to believe that is, Nigeria ha must have the highest. Um, number of people well, that are well, like we don't have the stats yet we don't have the stats right i just believe because, because you turn here don't relocate you turn <laughs> here <laughs> the, the thing is if you even check the population how many can afford to relocate mm -hmm. legally mm, legally uh, yeah yes, how many can, even the illegal ones the money they pay well mm -hmm. so how many really can afford to do that so I, I really don't think maybe someone will come up with stats because i think that also in the european countries there's been some migration especially um when it comes to people looking for a better place to work, everybody just wants somewhere better, mm. you know. Uh, and then the case with what is happening in the Middle East. So until there's, there's a line there that I really wanted to, you know, latch on, and which is when migration will be a choice and not a necessity. Mm. It's a long That's time. A long time. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> That's a long, long time. Yeah, and not just for Nigeria. It's I just tell a long you. thing for a lot of troubled countries. Yeah. People just want where they would have a, a bright future. Yeah, so what did you find for us in the news, AK? Uh, quite in, the news is quite interesting. So um, at first I want to talk about this news from this day. And it's that CBN boosts poultry industry with a disbursement of 12.5 billion credit. Mm. Now, why this spoke to me? Because you remember, um, I think last month or so, we talked about... Um, Food, some food, food security. Food security, and then over and over again, I've heard people say, "Where's this money going to?" And there's no report. But it stood out for me, and I wanted to take it because here, for the first time, or for the first time in a long while, for me, I'm seeing names being called, and I'm seeing numbers mm. being shared. So we have here that about 600 and. 39 farmers benefited from 1.9 billion of that money. Another 898 um, benefited from 1.59 billion. But another thing is that we still see a huge chunk of this money going to the very big farmers. Hmm. So you see, out of 12 billion, we can only calculate three, 3 billion that they've shared for over 1,000 people, hmm. 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is for the big farmers. The big what farmers. I would want to see in the future is a real distribution of these funds to maybe SMEs that are not like the farmers that are like multinationals mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. That really, those other people that are filling in the gap, yeah. really, it should get to them. Absolutely. It will make a lot of sense, yes. you know. It will make a lot of sense. Because if you spread it that way, you're able to empower more people as yeah. opposed to just having... Yeah, so instead of going to the micros and doing mm -hmm. peanuts, try and probably meet them somewhere, the SMEs themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the people that are not as big as the Fortuners of this world, yeah. but in that in between, order, in yeah. between. They, they, they can come farm. to Buffer Farm. We will accept yeah, please, them. Please, please go to Buffer <laughs> Farms. <laughs> All right, so my story, I just wanted to um, point this because we had talked about um, sexual violence and, I mean, uh, domestic violence, rather, on Tuesday. And we had um, some guests, you know, I mean, it was an amazing conversation. Um, so a group... Um, a civil organization um, group, I think they are called CODE, that's Connected Development, a leading civic um, society organization, and the Canadian High Commission in Nigeria are calling for an end to sexual and gender-based violence mm -hmm. and de um, domestic abuse by encouraging state governments to adopt the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act specifically they are saying in Kano state the call was made as a result of the recent disheartening report mm. made by the inspector general of the nigerian police mohammed adamu that said 717 rape cases were recorded in five months across the country marking a spike in sexual and gender-based violence so for me this i mean this vap act which clearly outlines the laws to tackle violence against women and girls in nigeria mm -hmm. has still not been implemented in 20 states wow. so five years after it was enacted now most citizens remain unaware of this law because 
and the, impli and the implications yeah. as well. So yeah. I'm so happy because I, I, I remember we, when we had that conversation, this VAP Act was one of the, um, the laws that was, we talked about. And, you know, and the, our guest, and I think Olamide as well, um, also um, testified that AKT is leading right now. In fact, they have sur surpassed um, um, Lagos State in terms of um, crimes against sexual um, violence and, and gender-based violence. So imagine if more states are forward-thinking and progressive like a kitty state, you know, adopting this. It will go a long way. Yes, you it know, will. As, yeah, this year has been really tough. Mm -hmm. And because of so many things that have happened this year, it has also revealed a lot of weaknesses for a lot of people. And the, the biggest victims are young girls, women, you know, that are in their homes, you know, being raped and all of that. We've seen it happen over and over again. And I think if any forward-thinking state government would you know, adopt this uh, law. I'm just thinking why it is so difficult to adopt the law. I, I can't find the good reason why you shouldn't take Yeah, on something that is supposed law. to be good for everyone that, I mean, to protect the, your citizens. Well, we'll keep talking about it. I just thought to mention it because we talked and about it on here. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. case that needs, it's um, an issue that, that would, needs to be yeah, brought on the forward front burner and people all the really time. need to be educated about it. Yeah, so you had one final story for us. Yes, we have, uh, we have one final story and this is taken from the Vanguard. Very, okay, let me save my adjectives. <laughs> Fresh hurdle for Conjuela as Trump trade shift once WTO leadership race reopened. Mm -hmm. And I'm, so what is bothering <laughs> me that? What is it about this thing? Mm -hmm. What is it really? Because as a former finance minister and also as a former, um, what was the role in the World Bank again? I think she was deputy. Yeah, so you can't tell me that the woman does not have that, that excuse does not hold water. When you say she is not qualified, what do you mean exactly mm -hmm. that she's not qualified? All the other countries and all the other members that had voted, do they not know how to evaluate <laughs> what is needed for the position? So mm. I really think that this has gone beyond what meets the eye. Mm. And they should really tell us what it's about, really, because I can't understand what the fight is. But I'm hopeful that we'll see this to the end and the victory that we have celebrated will make it a party. In fact, you know that victory, we celebrated it almost how many times on our group? We will keep it. <laughs> we will keep sending it. We will keep sending it. We will say congratulations. They were one. They like, it wasn't confirmed. And then they confirmed it. And then he wants it reopened. <laughs> I'm just saying, is this the final trump card? It's not even the trump card. I think there's just something about Nigeria. I, I feel that. Why do I have this feeling like it is because she's, she's Nigerian. Nigerian? That's why this is happening. That's, that's the feeling that I get. But I thought they... Um, the South Korean woman was withdrawn. She drew. She dropped out. Not she like dro you, okay, yeah, she, sorry, she, she dropped, dropped out. out. Yes. So if you reopen it, I don't understand. <laughs> maybe they'll bring fresh candidates. I don't know. But I just think that maybe because of Nigerian. Wala is Nigerian, well, maybe that's why. Let's because keep our I still can't like find, you know, a, the reason. A, yeah, where, a proper no, it's, reason. It's more than it meets the eye. You know. More than what it and it's not just only with Nigeria that is having this battle. You know, there are some. I think it's I was tough. listening we to. cannot just have one. one I person. was watching the news on CNN <laughs> about um, the people that they were going to be sentenced to death or something like that. He's rushing the process. He wants to quickly. So there are so many things he wants to quickly. Unfortunately, do he cannot he um, quickly build the wall. Well, <laughs> well, well, well. All right. So today we just want to unwind and learn because me, I need a holiday. I don't know. I'm going to escape it. Well, I don't worry. Meet my PA. We'll, meet my PA. We'll sort, we'll you sort out. me out. <laughs> So we'll be having our guest as we discuss, um, what's it called, holiday on a budget. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.